Hey guys, so today I want to talk to you about a topic I feel very passionate about and that is going to be safety. The reason why I say safety and not cheating like in the thumbnail, it's because I want to talk about general safety practices, things you can do to prevent cheating from happening, how to deter cheaters, how to spot it before, during, or after, or who to contact when you see cheating occur. So the reason why I'm making this video in the first place is because last week we had an incident at an online event where one of the top players was caught cheating and footage was posted online. Now, normally, yes, you can record footage and send it to the TO, send it to Bandai so they can hand out their appropriate punishment. However, this was posted publicly for everybody to see. And because of that, social media pretty much went at the guy. Uh, the guy was getting a slew of threats, harassment, bullying, racial slurs, insults towards his family. And that is unacceptable. I don't condone cheating, but I also don't condone players taking matters into their own hands and having their own sense of, sense of justice towards it because ultimately we are playing Bandai's game and that is Bandai's decision to make on what happens with that player because what he did within that game. Uh, so with that, I want to go over some things you can do to uh, make things easier so there's less cheating going on, at least in your personal tournament experience. First and foremost, most cheating occurs on online events. So as the webcam events, as you can see, you know, there is, you're playing within the confines of your camera. There is blind spots. Sometimes you can't see things on every side. So the most important thing I recommend you do is get some streaming software such as OBS and Streamlabs OBS. And those will help you record your screen or your Discord app. And that way, when you start your game, you can hit record or stream and then, or both. And then that footage will be recorded in case something happens. You can always bring it up to a judge and they'll see it and they'll make a decision. So most importantly, before anything else, I don't know all the privacy laws in the States or other countries, but normally in most TOs, what they ask for you is that if you are recording for your personal use, like studying and whatnot, you don't have to ask for consent. But if you're doing it to upload it at a later date or streaming it, you do have to get player consent. So before you start doing streams or uploading videos for your YouTube channel or Facebook or Twitter or whatever, do ask for consent. So whenever an incident of cheating happens, you already have that saved. You just upload it to Discord or whatever uh, media medium you want to use. You give it to the judge. They'll see it. They'll review it. And a decision will get made to get them you know, disqualified, overturned, or um, make a decision on the spot on whether they lose the game automatically or whichever, you know. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so that's the first thing. Uh, if you can, you have the, the assets, technology, the resources to do it, get a streaming software like OBS or Streamlabs. And moving on to the next thing is that if you happen to uh, see cheating going on, a lot of the times, make it as polite as possible. Go up to the Ask Judge tab on the Discord of that TO, add the judge, call him up to go to this number table, They'll come in and calmly, politely, and concisely tell them what the issue is, and they'll do the best they can do to help you. And if you have the footage for it, even better, because then they'll have concrete evidence that this happened, and they can review it and make an immediate decision rather than make it into a he said, she said situation. Uh, after that, in the case that you maybe had an inkling that the player cheated, but you did record it and the match was over, if the round hadn't ended, you can always ask judge, talk to them, give them the, uh, the file, they'll review it. And if it's before the, the next round goes on, carries on, then a decision can be changed. All right. So first of all, when starting a game, you want to have a clean, organized board state. So my playmat doesn't have any grits or anything. So I'm going to first show you how the official playmat sh should be like for uh, Bay Area. So this is one of the uh, paper play mats from the starter decks. So as you can see, we have life, dawn, cost, trash, all that stuff here. So when you're playing your game, you will set up your deck right here. Uh, you will have your dawn right here. And then when you're playing the game, when you start, you will get your hand, oh, sorry, your leader. You will get your hand five, right? Your five cards. Okay, cool. And then you will set up your life. So this leader is six life. When you start doing your life, you always got to go 
from bottom to top. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six life right here. So as you can see, I went top card to the bottom, second top card to the uh, fifth last. So because when you're picking up your life, you're gonna pick it up from one, two, three, four, five, six. I think a lot of players like to do, first of all, it's that they go, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. That is not the proper order because that's gonna change the order that your cards come out of your life because the top life, top card in your deck needs to be the bottom one, the last one you take. And when people do this, the top card becomes the top life, the first one you take. That's the first thing. So always keep an eye on that. You know, another thing to look out for is that players that have their Dawn deck face up, ideally your Dawn deck needs to be face down. Face down because if you keep it up like this, say you're playing with Kaido, against Kaido, and they're like this, and they have two Dawns. So now how do you differentiate what is in the Dawn deck and what isn't because they can just, you know, slow hand. Oh, I have nine. So always got to keep it face down because that's what the rules say. You got to have your Dawn deck face down. So incidents like that don't occur. It could be intentional cheating or it could be just accidents, you know. Always let a player know that if you see her doing that, kindly and politely inform them. If you could please put your Dawn deck face down and if they refuse to do so, get a judge and they will tell them to do so. Uh, another thing to do is that I noticed a lot of it happening recently, sleeves. To play the One Piece card game, you have to play with opaque sleeves. You cannot see the card back. This is another reason why I like katanas because katanas are not see-through. A lot of the dragon shields are pretty thin and you can see the card back and that could imply you mark your cards. Uh, what a lot of people do, it's they like to have an inner sleeve to cover it so you cannot see it anymore, which is fine. Uh, so this sort of sleeve, you cannot play a whole deck all clear sleeves for that reason because you can have a nick or something and you know, oh, that's that one card, you know. Something to look out for. Another example is to maintain your play area clear and organized. It's because, say, you're playing a game and things are all over the place. You don't know what is what. Everything's so scattered. How do you know what card is where? Who is there? Sometimes what I see a lot of players do from other games is that they have the leader right next to the characters. And then it creates a... Uh, not intentionally per se, but a misleading board state in which people think that they have already five characters and, you know, they'll make plays according to that. So that's why the game designers made a decision to put the leader right here. So that way you have a clear image that you have the four characters left over here and these dawns stay in your dawn area, your cost area. Uh, also, it should be obvious that when you're putting dawn uh, for a character to boost it, you got to put it under the uh, character to imply and state that this character is Don X1 and so on. Not always, you know, not do this, you know, or sometimes I'm not saying it's malicious or it can happen, out of, you know, maybe you want to be organized. Uh, you do this. You can't even tell how many Don are on that ace because of the way that it's made. So, yeah. It's all a matter of being organized and see, I don't know or don't rather. <clears throat> it's all a matter of being organized, tidy and neat and communicating with your opponent on what's happening because we're in online events and it's not like in person where you can go reach across and grab the card and okay, it's this card, you know. So that's something you can look out for. Uh, another thing, as you might have noticed, I never have my hand on the camera. When you're playing on an online event, you gotta have your hand in your camera view at all times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so it is meant to always be seen. You should always be having that hand visible because God knows what can happen. It to go like this and, oh, I have more cards now. You know, so it's always your personal responsibility to look out for that, to make sure the hand is there. 
uh, of course, we don't want to accidentally, you know, show show the cards to the opponent and all that stuff. But one thing you can do is that you don't always have to go shuffle, shuffle. You know, you can just see what you got here. And then when you're done looking at it, just put it down. And that way there's no issue or say like, oh, I can't see your hand. I don't know how many you got. Okay, they got how many? One, two, three, four, five. Good. Okay, done. You know, uh, another thing they can do. I don't have it on me, but I can do markers for life. So say you have your life right here, your six. Yeah, so what you can do, it's uh, you can have some dice over here to signify how much life they got left. So it's easier because sometimes, you know, some sleeve colors are like very mesh and uniform and it could create misleading times where you see life stacking top of each other and you get the idea, oh, they got four life left. They have one, so on. So, especially on their online events, it's a uh, really good practice to have a die on top of this so they will know you have this much life. One last thing for the gameplay portion of this video is I want to say that if you feel that something is wrong and something happened during the game where you feel things went wrong, it's that you should not say you think you lost the game, you know, you scooped everything up, you're picking everything. You're mixing up your deck uh, and your trash and all that stuff. And they go, oh, wait, you had this much uh, attack and I had this much counter. And they're like, well, now you put everything away. You shuffled everything. You can't even go back and see, well, I had this card. I had this card. I had this card. You already put everything away and you conceded the game and or vice versa. So... If you think something was wrong, always give it a second, let it marinate, and if it feels good, it feels good, and if something feels wrong, hold your play. Don't automatically say you're done and scoop everything up. Just say, hold on a second. Uh, I want to get a judge. You contact the judge, make him come to the table, and you explain and say, hey, so I have my board state right here, and I have all these characters, and I played th these many counters. So... I think we should keep playing because the I managed to successfully guard the attack, you know. So it's just a common practice because you want to play so fast that you forget things going on around you and maybe you don't catch that they were 1,000 short of their attack or you were. And, you know, it takes a second to hold on and take a look at the board rather than you scoop everything up because you never know. In the heat of the moment, people just miscount and it happens i saw it happen myself at gencon uh one of the players miscounted the attack and they conceded it and then they realized oh wait this attack had this much and then thankfully they rewinded the game state and they saw oh yeah you're right and they went and go and reversed the decision which is fine it was great everybody you know communicated they were very amicable towards it and it was fixed and everything went great Oh, I'm sorry. And one final thing I want to say when it comes to gameplay and online events, it's that uh, deck size is public knowledge. Uh, so say you're playing against a Nami player and, you know, double sleeving makes decks look really thick. Uh, if you feel unsure on the validity of the deck being 50 cards, you are more than welcome to ask the player to count out a deck in front of you and make sure it's 50. So everything is fine. Uh, in the occasion that you see, like, not prevalent right now, but say like back during the Kaido times, some people maybe were playing more than four Nigashima. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot have the player reveal their deck and their deck and show you how many islands they had. However, what you can do is you can call a judge and have them verify that for you. And that also goes for in-person events. If you feel like this guy has been seeing island way too often during tournament, uh, and you've seen it all tournament long, you can always ask a judge and say, hey, can you take a look at this guy's deck and deck check him? And they can see, oh, he has only four. Or, oh, whoa, he has more than four. So that's something you can do. Um, because don't forget, again, your deck count is public knowledge. The uh, discard is public knowledge, that sort of thing. So always, you know, information is important. Always communicate with your opponent. Uh, make sure everybody knows everything and do make sure everything is nice and organized so both players can see what is going on in your board state. 
But yeah, uh, this is the whole reason why I'm making this video because of what happened this past weekend. Because I see that whenever these uh, cheating allegation or evidence videos come about, nothing positive ever comes out of this. It's always just uh, the player get put, get put on blast, harassed, uh, bullied, racial slurs come about. Um, I don't believe that's something that should be happening in the One Piece card game community. I think we're better in that. Uh, I love everyone in this game. Uh, the players, judges, content creators, I think I think they're all great. I had a really fun nine months playing this game, and I feel like a lot of people feel the same way too. And with this video, I wanted to get you something that's a little bit different than just saying, hey, this guy did this, and you know, punish him. Instead, I wanted to offer the other side of things and say what you can do if you see these uh, cheating instances happening or what you can do to protect yourself from it happening to you. So I hope this video was helpful for at least you know a few people that care to watch. Uh, I'll be back to making more opening videos of uh, product real soon. I got a starter deck video for uh, starter deck eight and nine. So I'll be seeing you guys later. Thank you so much guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.